Welcome friends to Crying Stones Ministries on this blessed Monday. It's a joy to have you with us as we dive into another day of enriching Bible lessons. Your presence here is greatly valued and if you're new, we warmly invite you to join our growing community. Let's start today's session with a prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you with hearts open to receive your word. As we explore the depths of your providence and grace, enlighten our minds and strengthen our faith. May we see your hand in history and in our lives today, guiding us through every trial. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's lesson is titled, Christians Providentially Preserved. It's a profound testament to God's unfailing grace and protection over his people. Have you ever wondered why you are here in this moment listening to this message? Our lives are not a series of random events, but rather a beautifully woven tapestry orchestrated by a higher power. This is the concept of providence, the divine guidance and care that shapes our journey, leading us to where we need to be. Today we'll explore a striking example of providence in the Christian narrative, a testament to God's unfailing grace and protection over his people. The story is titled, Christians Providentially Preserved. It's a tale that unfolds in the backdrop of a significant historical event, the destruction of Jerusalem. This was a time of great turmoil, a time when the future of the Christian faith hung in the balance. Amidst the chaos and confusion, there emerged a glimmer of hope. A miraculous opportunity presented itself, allowing the Christian community to escape the impending doom. This was not a stroke of luck or a random happening. It was a vivid illustration of divine intervention, a clear testament to God's providential care. As we delve into this historical event, we'll see how God's hand guided his people maneuvering circumstances to ensure their preservation. We'll witness the tangible manifestation of his protection, a beacon of hope amidst the storm. This journey, though fraught with trials and tribulations, is a powerful reminder of God's unfailing commitment to his people. Through this story, we'll uncover the profound truth that God's providence is not just a concept confined to the pages of history. It is an active, ongoing process, shaping our lives, guiding our steps, and leading us to our destiny. And so as we delve into the depths of this historical event, let's keep in mind the overarching theme, God's providence and protection. Let's ponder over how this divine intervention from over 2000 years ago resonates with our lives today, how it shapes our understanding of the world, our faith and our journey ahead. Remember, each moment of our lives, including this very one, is part of a divine plan, a testament to God's providential care, so let us open our hearts and minds to receive this truth as we journey together into the depths of Christians providentially preserved. The year was 66 AD and the city of Jerusalem was under siege. The Roman legions under the command of Cestius Gallus had surrounded the city, intent on subduing the Jewish rebellion. The atmosphere was tense, filled with fear and apprehension. The city's inhabitants were bracing themselves for a brutal and bloody battle. Suddenly, and against all military logic, Cestius Gallus ordered his troops to withdraw. The Roman legions, which had seemed invincible, retreated, leaving the city and its inhabitants in a state of stunned disbelief. It was a miraculous reprieve, a surprising turn of events that no one could have foreseen. But for the Christian community in Jerusalem, this unexpected withdrawal was not merely a stroke of luck or a strategic blunder on the part of the Roman general. It was a divine signal, a sign from God, a fulfillment of a prophecy made by none other than Jesus Christ himself. In his prophetic discourse on Mount Olivet, Jesus had forewarned his followers about the impending destruction of Jerusalem. He had urged them to flee the city when they saw it being surrounded by armies. And now, the sudden withdrawal of the Roman legions provided the Christians with a window of opportunity, a chance to escape before the final siege. Without wasting any time, the Christian community seized this opportunity. They packed their belongings, took their families, and left the city, relocating to the town of Pella in the Decapolis region. It was a daring and dangerous journey, fraught with perils and uncertainties. But they undertook it with faith and courage, trusting in the words of their Lord. Their escape was successful. While the city of Jerusalem was subsequently destroyed in a devastating siege by the Romans, the Christian community was safe in Pella. They had been spared the horrors of war and the agony of defeat. They had been preserved not by their strength or their wisdom, but by the providence of God. The story of the siege of Jerusalem and the escape to Pella is a remarkable testimony to the power and the grace of God. It's a clear example of how God can intervene in history, maneuvering events and circumstances to protect his people. Even when the odds seem insurmountable, 
Even when the situation appears hopeless, God can create a way out, a path to safety, a means of escape. So why did the Roman legions withdraw from Jerusalem? Historians and military experts may offer various explanations, citing strategic considerations, logistical challenges, or internal disputes. But for the Christian community, the answer was clear. The withdrawal of the Roman legions was not a mere coincidence or a random occurrence. It was a divine intervention, a providential act of God, a fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy. This was no mere coincidence, but a clear demonstration of divine intervention. In the midst of turmoil and danger, God had preserved his people. He had guided them, protected them, and delivered them. And he continues to do so today in our lives in ways that we may not always understand or recognize, but his hand is always there, guiding us, shielding us, and leading us towards his perfect plan. The Bible is a treasure trove of reassurances of God's protection. It is filled with verses that speak volumes about his providence and care for his people. As we journey through life, these scriptures serve as our compass, guiding us and reassuring us of God's loving presence. Consider Psalm 46, 1. Here we find an uplifting message that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. This scripture paints a vivid picture of God as our shelter, our fortress in times of storm. It assures us that in the face of adversity, we are not alone. God is always with us, providing strength and solace. Let's turn to Isaiah 41, 10. This verse offers a similarly comforting message. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This scripture reiterates the promise of God's unwavering support. It is a reminder that God is not just a distant deity, but an intimate companion who walks with us, holding us up when we falter. These verses, among many others, reinforce the message of God's providence and protection. They remind us that God is not a passive observer but an active participant in our lives. He is continually at work, maneuvering circumstances for our benefit, guiding us through trials, and providing us with the strength to endure. Yet these assurances of protection do not promise a life devoid of challenges. On the contrary, they remind us that in the midst of our struggles, God's presence is a constant. His protection does not mean the absence of trouble, but the assurance of his unwavering support within it. In the midst of chaos, God's providential care remains our steadfast anchor. He is our refuge, our strength, and our ever-present help in times of trouble. As we navigate life's turbulent waters, let's hold fast to these promises, remembering that God's protection is not just a biblical concept, but a living reality that we can experience every day. While God's protection is a certainty, it does not exempt us from trials and tribulations. This statement may seem paradoxical, but it's crucial to understand in our spiritual journey. The Bible is explicit about this reality. Take a look at Hebrews 11.35, 38 for example. It tells us of men and women of faith who were tortured, mocked, whipped, imprisoned, stoned, and killed for their allegiance to God. They lived in deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground, yet they were commended for their faith. This scripture doesn't shy away from the harsh reality of suffering. It acknowledges it head on and celebrates the faith of those who endured. Similarly, Revelation 2.10 warns us not to fear what we are about to suffer. It foretells that the devil will throw some of us into prison to test us and we will face tribulation, but it also encourages us to remain faithful unto death, promising us the crown of life. These passages might be hard to swallow, yet they bring to light a profound truth. Suffering is part of the Christian journey. It's not a punishment or a sign of God's absence. On the contrary, it is a tool that God uses to refine us, to shape us into the image of Christ. Just as gold is refined by fire, our faith is refined by trials. Suffering strips away our self-reliance and exposes our need for God. It humbles us, teaching us to lean not on our understanding but on God's wisdom. It strengthens our character, producing in us perseverance, character, and hope. Moreover, suffering is not a futile exercise, it serves a divine purpose. Through persecution, God's kingdom advances. The early church grew exponentially amidst extreme persecution. Why? Because their suffering was a testimony to their unshakable faith. Their perseverance was a beacon of hope in a world lost in darkness. So let's not be surprised or discouraged by trials. Instead, let's embrace them as opportunities to grow in faith and character. Let's remember that our Savior himself suffered on our behalf, setting for us an example to follow. Through suffering, God refines us, and through persecution, his kingdom advances. 
Let this truth strengthen and guide us as we navigate the challenges of our Christian journey. In the Christian faith, we find a paradox, victory through defeat. This paradox is deeply woven into our spiritual DNA, and nowhere is it more evident than in the martyrdom of early Christians. To understand this, let's cast our minds back to the early church, a time when followers of Christ were persecuted relentlessly. They faced unimaginable hardships, many meeting their end in brutal and public executions. To the onlookers, it might have seemed like the ultimate defeat. But was it? Take a moment to ponder this. Had it not been for their sacrifice, would the gospel have spread as widely and as swiftly as it did? These martyrs, through their unwavering faith and courageous sacrifice, became beacons of light in a world of darkness. Their stories echoed through the ages, inspiring countless others to embrace the teachings of Christ. The great Christian author Ellen G. White offers profound insight on this subject. She observes the futile attempts of Satan to quash the burgeoning Christian movement through violence and intimidation. Yet, each attempt only served to fuel the spread of the gospel. These martyrs did not die in vain. Their deaths were not the end but the beginning. Their sacrifice was not a defeat but a victory, a testament to the enduring power of faith. Their blood became the seed of the church, and from this seed sprung a mighty tree whose branches spread across the globe. Their defeat was not a loss, but a gain. Their end was not a termination, but a commencement. Their sacrifice was not a vanquishing, but a triumph. So, as we reflect on this paradox of victory through defeat, let's remember the martyrs of the early church. Their legacy serves as a powerful reminder that even in our darkest moments, there can be light. Even in defeat, there can be victory, and even in death, there can be life. Their sacrifice was not a defeat, but a triumph, a testament to the enduring power of faith. So what does this mean for us today? As we journey through the landscape of our own lives, we might find ourselves asking this question. How do we perceive and proclaim God's love amidst the trials and tribulations we face? Well, let's take a page from the book of the early Christians who escaped Jerusalem. These courageous souls living in a time of great adversity displayed a faith that was unshakable, a resilience that was undeniable. They stood firm in the face of danger, guided by the Holy Spirit, and seized the opportunity to escape when it presented itself. Their story is a beacon for us, a shining example of how to navigate through life's stormy seas. In the throes of our own struggles, we may feel overwhelmed, even lost. But remember, it's during these times that God's love can be most profoundly felt. It's a love that is not abstract or distant, but a present, tangible reality that sustains us through our darkest hours. It's a love that whispers words of comfort when we're in pain, that wraps us in a blanket of peace when we're anxious, that lights our path when we're in the dark. But how do we proclaim this love amidst adversity? By living out our faith boldly, just like the early Christians did, by showing compassion to those around us, by standing up for what is right, by being a beacon of hope in a world that often seems shrouded in darkness, by taking every opportunity to share the good news of God's love, just like the early Christians did when they escaped Jerusalem and spread the gospel far and wide. And so as we continue on our journey, let's strive to be like those early Christians. Let's be attuned to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, ready to act when God opens a path for us. Let's be brave and bold in our faith, ready to proclaim God's love to the world no matter what obstacles we might face. May we, like them, be attuned to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, ready to act when God opens a path for us. As we conclude today's lesson, let's carry with us the assurance of God's providence and protection. We've journeyed through a rich tapestry of divine intervention and providence, observing God's unfailing grace and protection over his people. We've seen how God, in his infinite wisdom, provided a miraculous escape for the Christian community from the impending destruction of Jerusalem. Drawing from the sacred scriptures, we've been reminded of the steadfast support and care God offers. He is our refuge, our strength, a constant presence in times of trouble, Regardless of the chaos around us, his providential care is an unwavering anchor for our souls. We've also acknowledged the reality of suffering for the sake of Christ, that enduring hardship and persecution is part of our spiritual journey. Yet even in this, we see God's protection. Through suffering, he refines us, and through persecution, his kingdom advances. The blood of the martyrs, far from extinguishing the faith, becomes the seed of the church. We've reflected on the profound paradox of victory through defeat, a central theme in our faith. The futile efforts of the enemy to destroy the church through violence only serve to fuel the spread of the gospel. 
the sacrifice of the martyrs becomes a triumph, their deaths a testimony to the enduring power of faith. And what does all this mean for us today? We've explored how, even amidst pain and suffering, we can continue to testify about God's love. This love is not abstract or distant, but a tangible reality that sustains us through our darkest hours. As we navigate our own spiritual journeys, may we remember the Christians of Jerusalem whose escape signifies God's ability to preserve us in the midst of turmoil. Let's strive to be attuned to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, ready to act when God opens a path for us. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the testament of God's unfailing grace and protection. We invite you to join us again tomorrow for another inspiring Bible lesson. Until then, may you walk in the assurance of God's endless love and protection. God bless.